my name is, uh, is Sliman, Sliman Becky, and I'm a research scientist at CNRS in Latmos. So. And I'm going to use some, uh, some information about how uh, I ended up being, uh, being a scientist and working, working in climate. So I did, a, I, did a, I did a PhD in Paris, University Pierre, Pierre and Marie Curie. And uh, by, uh, by accident, I, I was, so I, so I did a PhD in organic chemistry and it, it was experimental work. And after, and after my PhD, I was supposed to do my military service. And in France, at that time, it was compulsory. It's not anymore. Now the army is, uh, is, uh, is only composed of uh, professional soldiers. At that time, there was a conscription. And, and uh, I had the opportunity to do my military service, uh, military service which was civil service in, uh, in England, in Cambridge in a group working on physics and chemistry of the, of, the, of, the, of the atmosphere. So I did my military service there for one and a half year and I stayed, and I stayed in England for seven, eight years. And I got, and I got a position in CNRS in Paris. And I've been working in Paris uh, in the CNRS for the last, I would say, uh, 15 years. So this is how I ended up uh, working in, on the, in the physics and chemistry of the, of, the, of the atmosphere. In my early career, I was working on the ozone, the ozone layer and the, uh, the impact of uh, CFCs on, uh, and halons on, uh, on the global ozone layer. And now I'm, I'm working on climate and climate change, uh, notably in the, in, the, in the Arctic. So now I'm going I'm, I'm gonna to give you a brief overview of uh, a brief overview about about climate and climate change. Okay, so it's a it's a presentation by by myself, but also with the help of Anna Anna, Anna Sarkisian from uh, from Latmos. So we'll start with uh, you. You may not be very familiar with the concept, the notion of uh, climate. So you are probably more familiar with the the weather and meteor meteorology. And what we call meteorology in a, and weather, it's, it's really the state, the state of, the, of the atmosphere, dynamics of the atmosphere, and it's characterized by a number of atmospheric parameter, parameters. So when you have a look on TV on the weather, the, the weather forecast, they tell you if it's going to be warm or cold, if it's going to be raining or, or not. It, it's, and we call that temperature, uh, clouds, Precipitation, precipitation is, is rain. So, and they tell you also about the, the wind, if it's going to be strong winds or not. And essentially, the weather it's re really focused on, I would say, the surface, uh, this, the atmospheric state, but at, at the surface, because this is what is relevant to uh, to people living living on the Earth's surface. And that's what what you see here, it's a, simply. Uh, a picture of, of cloud cover over, over, over the Earth for, for a specific day. And you've got Africa, you've got Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, North America, and in white, it's the, the, the clouds. So usually, it's, what is happening is it's highly, highly va variable, variable system. So I'll could let's see if it's going to work. Codec and screen. No, it's not. It's, it's, it was supposed to be a movie, but what, but what is happening? It's, it's very, very v variable in space, in space and time, and it's, uh, it's, it's it really. Uh, you, you can have sun, sunshine one hour, and the following, f following, uh, following hour, it's going to be very rainy and, and, v and very cold. So the weather is changing very, very quickly. This is what is happening. So you see, it's very variable in space and time. And it's changing. It's changing very, very, very quickly. So we can, can stop it. We go back. We go back now to the to the presentation. So weather it's very great greatly from day to day and from place to, from place to place. Even if you've got two points, two locations, very close. It's very, very, very va variable. 
and and uh, what what is climate? But cl climate is essentially the uh, an average, a mean a, a, a mean a mean of the the, we the weather. So in meteorology, you are really interested in variability at small time scale and and small small uh, sp spatial and temporal scale. But when you are int when you work on climate, it's really the temporal and spatially average av average av average weather. So, f for instance, what what you want to know, it's not what's going to be uh, the weather tomorrow or in one hour. What you want to know is what what is the likelihood, the probability of having a sort of a warm Europe in 2050 or 2100. This is what 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 interests climate 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 scientists. So, what I've plotted here is the evolution of the temperature in Paris since the end of the 19th century, and in red is when it's warm. You've got, uh, and in blue it's when it when it's cold. And this is the the, the mean of the temperature in Paris, so it's 12.5 degrees. And in uh, the dark line, the black line is really the sort of an average of a, an average of this uh, of, of this flu, flu, fluctuation. So what you see, it's very va variable. But for for climate, what is interesting is the trend here, and what is going what is going on at the end of, uh, from 1917, 1980, and what you see, you have the impression that the temperature is, uh, is increasing in Paris, okay? So the, so the idea is that climate is really the average weather, weather condition over long pe periods, okay? And when you consider a climate, you need to average over at least a decade, two, two or three decades, which means 20 years, and you see what's going on. So you're not interested in the small, small fluctuations uh, in temperature. So what is interesting is this increase in, in, in temperature at the, at, the end, uh, at the end of the last century. And I haven't plotted uh, the last 15 years, but the, temp the temperature carries on increasing here. And, and climate, it's, uh, it, goes, it goes further than, uh, than meteorology, because meteorology is really the dynamics of the, of the atmosphere. But climate, we're also interested in the vegetation, the bio, what we call the biogeochemical cycle. It means the, the biological and chemical process in the ocean, in a, at the surface. I mean, it's how, how, the, how the ice is evolving over, over a long time scale, especially in, a, in the Arctic. So climate is it's really meteorology plus other plus other uh, other other fields. So vegetation, for instance, is an indicator of major clima climatic zones. So um, what I've plotted is a vegetation map of, uh, of the Earth. So you've got Australia, Asia, Europe, Africa, South America, and North, Amer North America, and this is Greenland. And usually, wh what, what you will find that in the tropics, it rain, it's very hot and it rains a lot. So you've got tropical, tropical forest. It at uh, just in the extra extra trop tropics, what you would find is often deserts. So you've got the Sahara Desert, is uh, uh, the Arabian pe Peninsula. You've got all the big deserts there where there's very little rain. And at mid latitude, it's the the to the, the temperature is uh, is pretty is pretty average. So it's temperate temperate climate. So it's very good for, for the, the, the agriculture over, over there. So over North America, Europe here, uh, and also in South, South America in, in this area. And as you go towards, towards the pole, for, from the equator towards the pole, and at the pole, it's very cold. So here you've got the Arctic, here you've got the Antarctic, and, and essentially it's, it's covered with uh, sea ice and snow. So there's little, uh, there's little, there's little vein vegetation so most people tend to live here because it's uh, it's quite temperate it's temperate so they are they are really the best temperate climate are the best condition for for, for life on us so I, ju I showed you I showed you the a plot of the temperature uh, records in Paris and you have seen that in the last uh, 30 or 40 years the temperature, the mean temperature has been has been increasing. So the question is, is the, the climate changing, uh, or what is happening? 
So again, the same plot, and really the question is this this trend uh, since the 1970s. And, and, and if you've got, uh, if you have a look at the temperature record in, in one city, you really want to know if, is it significant? Is it simply a local, local fluctuation, a local random fluctuation, or is it uh, representative of what's going on at a large scale over, a con over the scale of a continent or even over, 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 over the entire world? And this is the change so on the left hand side here. What, I, what I've plotted is the, the change between uh, 19, 1901 and 2012. For so it's over over 100, 100 years, the change in temperature in degree in, in degree Celsius. And it goes from so in blue it means that it's getting colder, and it's in red and purple it's getting warmer. And what you see is that over the last one of the years, typically, the temperature has been increasing almost everywhere. Okay, has been increasing the last one of the years, except here in this, in uh, in the south of uh, south of uh, Greenland, which is, big, which is uh, it seems to have been to have uh, to have cooled down, but everywhere else it has been increasing. And in summer, it has been increasing dramatically because for 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 Asia here for Russia. What you see in some, area, in some areas, you've got more than two degrees change in, in, temper, in, in temperature. That doesn't two degrees seems to be quite quite small. But in, in reality, it has a big impact on the water cycles, the rains, etc. So it has a big effect on 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 vegetation and uh, and on the, on the on the the life on Earth essentially. On the right hand side, what I've plotted is the Temperature, temperature uh, record in in England, and it's uh, and what you see it starts from 1910 to 2010, the last for 100 years, and in red is when it's warm, it, in blue it's when it's cold, and it's very very fluctu, fluctu there's a lot of flu, fluctuation. So what you see is that the temperature can change from uh, uh, plus three to uh, minus two. In in a in a short in a short period of time, so this is really more for the for people interested in weather. But what is interesting for 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 climate is the mean of that, the trend. And what you see is that it's more red here toward towards the end. So in England also it's war, it's warming up, okay. And you see it also on this map. So the importance of uh, when you study climate, climate, you need you need to average, okay? Average temporally and spatially. And the, the important point, the important message here to take home is that the Earth's, the Earth's surface is warming up everywhere. In, in the last one years, it's almost everywhere. And I've all plotted the, the Arctic, but the 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 strongest warm warming is occurs in the Arctic here. So um, what I'm showing now is just just uh, the North Hemisphere uh, average. So what is happening when you consider the temperature everywhere in the North Hemisphere and you average, and this is the change in temperature from uh, from 1860 to 2000, uh, 2015, and you see it more clearly now. It has really warmed up strongly here in the last uh, in the last. Uh, 40, 50 years. So it's, a, it's more, almost, almost a one, w one degree change with the previous, uh, the previous one, one of the, one of the years. So it's getting warmer and warmer, hotter and hotter. And, and for the period 1983 to 2012, it has been the, the warmest for the last 1,400 years. Okay, so it's getting warmer. And it's not only the temperature as a as a surface which is changing and increasing. Here is uh, the the sea level. You can, you can, we can measure the, how how the, the sea level is changing with time. And what you see is that it's what is happening in the last one hundred years, and it is clearly uh, inc uh, increasing the mean the mean sea level. It has been increasing by about 20, 20 centimeters. Okay, and this is a, this is a break from a 
from the globally stable sea level. So in the previous 1,000 years over there, it has it doesn't change at all the sea levels, and in the last 100 years, it it has been increasing dramatically. So what so what is happening? What what are the changes in uh, what what is driving the the change in climate? Okay. And the origin, in fact, is a change in the at, uh, in the chemical composition of the the atmosphere. Let me show you. And how do we do we know that? Okay. And when so what scientists do? What they, they drill in uh, in Antarctica or in Greenland, and they, and they drill what we call ice ice carrots. Okay. And this is what you get is sort of uh, uh, a Cylinder, uh, long cylinders of, of ice, and what is interesting in the ice is that you've got you've got bubbles that contain uh, that represent the air 100 years ago, a thousand years ago, or, or 100,000 years ago. As you go deeper and deeper, you're gonna you you are you are uh, you are probing older ice and older air, and this air which is trapped in the ice, like in bubbles. You, you can analyze it and and, uh, and measure the chemical composition of this air. And what, what I'm showing is that it's a result from an ice uh, ice record, and it went really deep because you go back till 600,000 years ago. Okay, so this is our time, and this is what is happening in the last in the last 600,000 years ago. And you can measure the concentration of gases, what we call greenhouse gases. And what are these gases? Is that they are they are sort of bl blankets. They are like blankets. Is that they trap the infrared uh, energy emitted emitted by the Earth's surface. And so, in fact, the higher the concentration, the the, the higher the, the temperature. So the most important one is CO2, and another very important one is methane. And you, we can also measure, uh, we can also determine the temperature in, in Antarctica using what we call the azotopic composition of, of the ice. So you've got uh, a thermometer, which is a an, an sort of thermometer from the azotopic composition, and you can retrieve the temperature. And what you see is, is that there have been large fluctuations in, th in th temperature. When it's blue, it's cold. When it's red and yellow, it's, uh, it's, it's warm. So there have been large fluctuations in in, temp, in temp temperature, and they are perfectly correlated with the concentration of green, greenhouse gases, CO2, the carbon dioxide, and the methane. So when the concentration of CO2 and methane is high, the temperature is high. When the concentration of CO2 is low, like here, and concentration of methane is low, the temperature the temperature is low. Okay, and so temperature is really driven by the co atmospheric concentration of uh, greenhouse gases, CO2 and methane. So there have been fluctuations. So where, where are we now? So this is the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. It varies from 180 ppm V, which is its uh, concentration unit. It's not important. Uh, but what's, what's important is that it varies between 200 and about 300, 300 ppmv in the last 600,000 years, but nowadays it's 400 ppm, ppmv. So it means that the concentration of CO2 has never been higher than, than, than today. At least in the last almost a million years, the concentration of CO2 has been varying between 200 and 300, 300 ppmv, and nowadays it's 400 ppmv. It, it has ne we have never seen s such a high concentration of uh, uh, atmospheric concentration of CO2. It's 400 ppmv na nowadays, about 400 ppmv. And you can s and, and you can plot them the concentration for the last year, for the last 2,000 years. And this is CO2, so it has been stable, stable, for about 1,000 number of years, and it started increasing. You see. Which has been increasing in the last 100 years, and this increase is about CO2 about plus 40 percent. So before, between it was varying between 200 and 300 here, and now it's it's 400. 
Okay, it's really a massive, massive increase in uh, concentration of CO2. Methane is the same thing. It has been relatively stable around 600, and it has been increasing in the last one or two, 200 years. And the concentration is now 1,800 ppb. It's a concentration need. So it means that the methane concentration has increased by a factor of three. It has been multiplied by a factor of three. And then two is the last, the last important greenhouse uh, greenhouse gases. It's the same. It has been increasing in the last one or 200 years by 20 percent. So the so the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere have reached unprecedented unprecedented level over over the last about a million years. And the cause we know it is human human activities. It's it's simply the fact that when you when, when you've got human activities, burning fuel, etc., and burning burning wood, you are increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases, and you are, you you you, which result into a, a temperature increase at the surface. So I'm going to show you some climate projection with with the model. What what is happening in the future? And this is a small movie. I will show you. Uh, so we use model is sort of simulators of. Uh, of the, the atmosphere, it describes physics and chemistry, etc. So this is uh, the, the sun, and this is the Earth. Here we are, and we are turning. You've got the moon orbiting around around the Earth. So this is how, how we model we model the, the system. Is where we we decompose the atmosphere in small small tubes. Okay, so you've got small tubes de decomposing the atmosphere. And we do the same. Uh, we do the same thing with uh, with, uh, with the ocean. So in in the atmosphere, we describe the clouds, the rain, etc. So what what I'm showing is that the big grid cell of the model and the clouds. And in in the climate models, we also describe the the vegetation. And what you see, and we describe so the rivers. The evaporation of water vapor, the formation of clouds, and now and the precipitation over the precipitation over the over, over mountains. At the same time, we describe so the human activities. Here, it's factories, uh, anthropogenic emissions of uh, of pollutants, including CO2. But we describe also the the ocean, the ocean circulation. So what you see, you've got cold current and warm current, and and, and within the uh, within the system, you've got all you've got also uh, what we call uh, biological activities and formation of carbon particles. So it's important because it traps the ocean is a is a is a trap for 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 CO2. So we put all of that in big big super big supercomputers, much more powerful than uh, what you find in a, in a normal perso personal computers. Okay. It means there are thousand uh, thousand chips all together, and, the, and and they calculate a range of uh, of p p parameters that we use. And first of all, to analyze the past the past history of the climate, but also more importantly, to uh, to have a look at what is going to happen in the future. So this is, for instance, the the sea surface the sea surface temp temperature. This is a, another a, another a uh, uh, small movie of clouds, uh, you have seen it. So it means that climate models, a term of the atmosphere, is a bit like the weather, the, the weather forecasting model, model. Here you've got another another plot of you see you've got also the winds. So you've got you've got Europe, Africa, and you've got the winds uh, blowing at, at the surface. So and what we're interested in also is what is going to happen in the future. So what is being plotted here is the the change in the in the temperature if you uh, if you increase the, if you increase the CO2. This is here's a change in the in the vegetation in the future. So that's it. Carry on. So I'm going to show you an, another movie. So what we do we we simply uh, try to predict what is going to happen in the future. So on the left hand side is a simulation of, of the climate 
uh, the simulation of the of the climate, but without uh, an increase in uh, concentration of greenhouse gases. And the right hand side here is a cons is a simulation when you increase the concentration of greenhouse gases, and this is what is going to be expect uh, expected in the future, especially if the Kyoto if the Kyoto protocol do doesn't work, and this uh, change in the in, the, in the, the temperature at the surface. So we start in, in 2002. So when it's getting red, it means it's getting warmer, and when it's getting blue, it's getting colder. So we start it. So we're 2005, 2007, 10. And you see, so the temperature fl fluctuates, okay? 2030. So what you see also is the continent. Huh? Here is Africa. Europe is uh, North and South America, and what you see is that it's getting warmer and warmer. This is what what uh, and this is for for the next for the for the for this century, okay? So what I what I'd show you before it was the increase the temperature in the last century, and now what you, what you are seeing is the is the increase the temperature in 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 the future. So I'm just showing it again, and I will stop it. I will stop it in the at, at two, uh, 2000, uh, 2100. So you can see you've got, you can have fluctuation like, from one year to, to another where it gets warmer or colder, but in general, the tendency is, is getting warmer. And so this is the effect of the increase in greenhouse gases, okay? And this one is when you, when you keep the greenhouse gases concentration constant. I'm gonna stop it, voila. And you see the effect. So what what is expecting is that the the, the Earth is uh, is gonna is the Earth temperature at the surface uh, is gonna increase by four or six 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 degrees. Okay. If we don't do anything, if we do not implement the Kyoto Protocol, if we don't control the concentration of greenhouse gases, it means reducing the emission of greenhouse gases. This is what what's going to happen.